got to say, I was the last one to believe this. I mean, that doesn't mean I didn't think the media should cover it or should avoid covering it. They covered they covered the nonsense with Stormy Daniels. We heard the Access Hollywood tape. Um, we got the, the uh, Christine Blasey Ford with the two front doors because she was allegedly sexually assaulted 20 years ago. I loved the two front doors. Um, but, you know, I worked in the Senate um, on um, or with the judiciary, the Senate Judiciary committee um, I worked for a low down enough senator that we didn't <laughs> we weren't specifically assigned to a committee we had to cover lots of them but it was Senate Judiciary Committee so I saw Biden you now he was older then but I, I I was I was when the allegations first arose um, I mean I didn't I, I didn't work for him, obviously, but I saw him, and it didn't seem very plausible to me. But now i got to say, you, you have a lot of evidence. There are the things you've cited, the next-door neighbor. Um, I think there's another friend that's come forward. Also, interestingly, um, the far-left writer passed away a few years ago, very far-left, um, formerly of The Nation magazine, I think it was, not, not Salon. Um, yeah, it was a nation. Alexander Coburn, he wrote a piece in 2008 when Obama picks Biden as his, as his vice presidential candidate, you know, going through this and that. I mean, he was attacking Biden for not being liberal enough. That was the gist of the column he wrote. And then right there in one of the early paragraphs, um, he talks about how Biden, you know, is a well-known sexual harasser and how he or this magazine has talked directly to a recipient of this sexual harassment. I just tweeted that one out earlier today. The call to Larry King from, from um, Tara Reid's mother, which CNN has taken down, Again, bullet to the head of the media. We will take no more pleas. No, oh, no, we'll try to do better next time. No, they cannot be trusted. The media's got to be burned to the ground, and, and so something more ethical can arise in its place. Um, but now, I, I, I mean, the indicia that, that a normal person would look for all seem to be there. They're very credible allegations. I will say we've known at least since Clinton, although some of us kind of suspected it, that that um, I mean this 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 sexual harassment law um, has nothing to do with protecting women. It isn't people who care about women and think that women shouldn't um, you know have <laughs> have their bosses dropping their pants in front of them, groping them, raping them. No, 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 no. It's always been a political weapon that only only works. It's like a subway card. It only works against Republicans. Um, I, I mean, I had been working at a public interest law firm um, defending sexual harassment cases that involve things like um, professors at colleges giving giving it, what they would say in a huge lecture course. One guy did um, a simile saying, um, I don't know, the belly dancer's stomach was like jello on top of a plate, on top of a vibrator. It was something like that. I'm pretty close to that. And one woman, he wasn't speaking to one person in particular, one woman sitting in the lecture hall sues him for sexual harassment. Um, he gets punished by the college. Those were the sorts of cases we were defending, and it took a lot of work. I knew about sexual harassment harassment law, um, they, they involved cases that would go to trial um, of a man having a vacation photo of his wife um, in a bikini on the beach. That was deemed, you know, hostile environment in the workplace. Then we get Bill Clinton dropping his pants and saying, kiss it, having state State troopers bring innocent little women far, far below him in the state hierarchy to his office. And Gloria Steinem write, writes an op-ed piece in the New York Times saying, yes, but he took no for an answer. So I think the media has been exposed. The feminists have been exposed. Um, and as for Biden, <laughs> and I mean, I hate to laugh about it because it's really sad to see him. He's this. It reminds me of Mueller. This really looks like elder abuse to me. Um, and the the <laughs> the new point um, I suspect no one else has made on 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 Biden um, because you all don't watch MSNBC. 
um, there was much made of the fact that it, that that uh, in the 2018 election um, that that black women, black women in particular, were the ones. Oh, they saved the country. They voted for Democrats. And remember, I don't know if you remember this, all of the hatred for white women who voted for Trump in 2016. These traitors, traitors to their gender. Um, so we've been hearing on MSNBC forever about how. Um, you know, thank God for black women voting Democratic. Um, <laughs> Biden never, ever would have gotten the nomination. I mean, he was coming in like fourth in every caucus, every primary, until he hit South Carolina. <laughs> and suddenly, um, you know, James Clyburn said, nope, we're voting for Biden. And throughout the South, all those primaries, the black voters and Democratic primaries voted for Biden. So... Ha, 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 Democrats! We will make America great again.